You want to know how to get your prayers answered immediately? Then don't go away from this video. Watch it to the end. But before I start and give you the key revelation, a mystery that the Lord showed me that brought so much closure, prayers answered quickly. Before I do that, I want you to do something for me. I want you to like this video, hit the bell notification to be updated, notified, hit that, that icon. I want you to even comment down below if you can right now and say, I'm ready. If you're ready to receive, subscribe too, if you haven't already. This is gonna give you literally exactly what you need to get your prayers answered. I'm gonna give you this revelation best based off of my own testimony. Let me tell you something. I've seen one of my closest friends in the world, a close friend of mine, who was at one point my enemy. I mean, I had thoughts of actually killing him. Unfortunately, that was the devil. That was the deception. That was the enemy's lies. That was the enemy's trying to steal our relationship. And guess what? He came to Christ, now part of this church on fire soon to be a leader the lord has spoken to me that he's going to help me apostolically build churches throughout the world the same way he helped me apostolically build trap houses for those that don't know drug houses when we were in the world not only did he get saved my blood brother who the enemy also put me against through deceptions lies and confusion because we were we were we were in the drug game we were we were selling drugs we were doing illegal stuff stealing robbing anything for money that's how it was when we were from guess what i came to christ Three years later, my brother gets saved and my friend, my best friend, who's actually his best friend, he was, he was a close friend of mine as well, got saved. Not only did they two get saved, both of them, my father got saved, who had a very strong, a very strong stronghold on his life. I mean, the enemy was trying to keep him back from being saved for a while. So how did these people get saved so quickly? I'm gonna give you guys the revelation God showed me early on in my walk and how I know it's biblical and it's gonna help you get your prayers answered immediately first i want to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit you have to know this so you can catch the full revelation ministry means service say it out of your mouth say service right so when we start a ministry we're starting a service onto god a business a kingdom business is a ministry because it's a business but its purpose is to serve christ so through a business you can serve christ by preaching the gospel by playing worship music during you know let's say you have a barber shop playing Christian rap and hiring Holy Spirit filled, um, you know, barbers. And that's a ministry because even though you're receiving income, even though it's a business, a kingdom business, it's still winning souls. It's a service unto God. So ministry means service. We are to serve God. A church is a ministry. It's a service unto God. And we have services where we're serving God. So service means you serve. Now the ministry or the service of the Holy Spirit and why he was sent, everyone say out loud, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not an it, he's not a dove, he's not a, a lightning, he's not, he's not a cloud. The ministry is a person. Say, Holy Ghost, you are a person. Amen. If you see a man of God and he's casting devils out, healing the sick, raising the dead, winning souls, preaching the gospel, preaching repentance, Preaching repentance. We don't see that a lot. Because when you preach about repentance, when you preach that that when you preach and the Holy Ghost backs you up, people will be convicted to repent. So that's how you know a man or a woman of God is working with the Holy Spirit, the person of, of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You're seeing people crying, shaking, can't stop it. That's the Holy Spirit. You're seeing people, you know, running to the altar to give their life to Christ. That's the Holy Spirit. Some churches, you never see that. You never see people getting saved. You never see people being transformed. You see lukewarmness. You see, you see religion. You don't see deliverance. You don't see healing. You don't see the power of God move. And that's because the ministry of the Holy Spirit is not there. The book of Revelation talks about how if you don't repent, there were seven churches mentioned. Only two were, the, were told not to repent because they were on point. Five out of the seven churches were told to come to repentance. Why? They were grieving the Spirit. And God said, if you don't repent, I'm taking my lampstand from you. They were going to be a dead church. That's why now, today, we see dead churches. The Catholic church is dead. Some other denominations are dead. That's division. It's about following the way, which is Jesus Christ. Back then, they weren't called Christians. They weren't called Pentecostals, Baptists. They were called followers of the way. The word Christian was actually a derogatory term for people who follow Jesus Christ. The Romans would say, these Christians in a derogatory way, we just adapted it, we took it on, right? But at the end of the day, we're followers of Jesus Christ, no denomination, that's the vision, that's demonic. But 
I believe the body of Christ is waking up. It's revival and we're coming to that understanding. Even the non-denominational has become a denomination. It's crazy, but you know, our church identifies as a non-denominational church so people can understand. We really don't have a denomination. We're just radical. <laughs> if we are a denomination, I say we're radical. We're just radical. We're remnant. We're remnant, baby. We're remnant, baby. <laughs> Amen. So, why do I let you why do I tell you that? Because I'm about to read some scriptures and I want you guys to know this. I want you guys to say, okay, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to do this. So when I see this, I know the Holy Ghost is in the church. You don't have to like the man of God who's leading. You don't like you don't have to like the woman of God who's leading. You don't have to like their personality. But if you see the Holy Spirit moving in their life, he's co-signing for a reason. You honor the position, not the person. I don't care if the person's a white boy all the way from Alabama. I don't care if the person's a Spanish boy all the way from Puerto Rico. Or let's say a black person all the way from Africa. Color don't mean nothing. The region you're from don't mean nothing when it comes to the kingdom. It's about one person, Jesus Christ. We're all family. Color don't matter. We're going to see in heaven that it meant nothing. Right? It's about the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? We take on the body and the blood of Christ. Not of, not of the, the, blood, the bloodline of, of, of where our parents are from. That stuff don't even matter. Everyone's mixed anyways nowadays. But anyways, let's talk about it. So how do your prayers get answered quickly? I'm going to read some scripture. Right, let's start off in the book of Revelation chapter 8. It says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints, upon the golden altar which which was before the throne this is talking about this is in the book of revelation and it says right here there was given on some incense that he should offer it with the prayers everyone right now say with say it outside so does that does that mean that prayer is incense no the prayers were offered with the incense the incense was offered with the prayers some of you are like oh my gosh i thought prayers were incense no they're not Incense is a sweet aroma to the Father. It, it, when it's a good incense, he sm it's a sweet aroma. It's pleasing to him. I want you guys to remember that. It's pleasing. Just like when you're hungry and you walk into a kitchen and it smells really good, it's pleasing. Your mood changes. So God's mood changes when he smells a good incense and it's offered with the prayers. Why, you why do you think so? Because God, if he gets that sweet smelling incense with all this wickedness in the world, with the prayers, he's going to answer them because his mood changes. Catch that in the spirit. So, let's continue. I want you guys to pull up your pull out your word from, to Acts chapter ten. We're going to start in verse one. They correlate these scriptures. I want you guys to catch this. I'm going to get deep. There was a certain man called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian the Italian regiment. So this man was a Ro was a centurion. He was a Roman soldier. He was a high ranking Roman soldier, right? A devout man though, who feared God with all his household. So he was a Christian, he was a follower of the way, and he was a Roman. That's why they created the Roman Catholic Church, because Jesus was so influential, even Roman soldiers, Roman, Roman, Roman lieutenants, Roman sergeants, Roman generals were getting saved. That's how, that's how powerful Jesus Christ was. The same ones who put him up on the cross. That's why they had to create the Catholic Church and manipulate and try to deceive and twist the ways of the scriptures. So look at this. So he's a devout man who feared God with all his household. That means everybody in his house feared God. He made sure people follow God. They follow Jesus. Look at this. Who gave alms generously to the people. This same word alms, if you go look it up in what's called, in the Greek, which is called the strong concordance, the interlinear, you'll see that alms also means charity, which is the same thing referenced in Malachi chapter 3. But we'll get there in a second. Who gave alms generously to the people and who prayed to God always. So he gave alms and prayed. Remember in Revelation, the incense and prayers. Watch this. Woo! Revelation for you guys. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius! An angel came. It doesn't say he was taken into a trance. It doesn't say he was in a vision. It doesn't say he was in a dream. It says an angel of God came in and said to him, Cornelius, with an exclamation mark. He yelled at him in the physical. Yes, angels can't pull up to you in the physical. The Bible says you do not know if you're entertaining an angel. So you need to treat it. When, when, when people come up to you and they ask you for money, if you discern by the Spirit, they could be sent from God. Be careful who you deny. Be careful who you treat wrongly. Be careful who you, you scream at in the middle of the road. 
Be careful who you have road rage against. Be careful who you reject. Don't despise somebody because they have poverty. Or don't despise somebody because they're lower than you in, in, at your workplace or because they come to the church and they don't have the, the fancy suit and all that stuff. Don't despise because you don't know if you're entertaining an angel. But anyways, an angel of God because of what? Cornelius's alms, which is his giving, his charity, on to onto people and onto which is on to God. You give on to God through who, wherever He wants you to give people, a church, a, a, a teacher, whatever it is. So He gave, right? An angel came and called him, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, "What is it, Lord?" So Cornelius got got scared, just like man. You see, John in the Book of Revelation got scared, right? Zachariah, right? John the Baptist's father got scared. Why do you think they got scared? Because if you see an angel, they look so celestial and out of this world, you're going to freak out. And no, an angel is not an alien. They're not. They're far beyond. They're way more celestial and supernatural than, than, a, than, a, than, a, than, a, than a demonic alien. Those are demons. Okay? They're operating in the second heaven and you don't want no parts of that. You know, they have, they, 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 they're, yeah, yeah. Don't, that's a whole nother subject. But an angel from God is scary because they, they look out of this world and they carry the glory, the, the, the glory of God, just like Zechariah, right? And, the, and when he was in the temple, when he was in the inner courts and he was fulfilling the duties and he dropped and he got scared out of his mind. And it says the angel carried the glory of God. Yep, it's true. They carry the presence, the power, the glory of God. So he got scared and said, what is it, Lord? Imagine that. A Roman centurion, a high ranking general saying, oh, shoot. What is it, Lord? Look, he said. So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Memorial. What's a memorial? When you look at military memorials, they're, they're statues, they're, they're places of remembrance for the people who fell, right? When you see a memorial for a soldier, it's a place where, you, where the person who died in battle is remembered, is recognized. That's a memorial. So because of his prayers and giving, he had a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and send men for Simon, whose surname is Peter. So do you know what happened? Because of his prayers and his giving, let's catch this. Peter got taken into a trance and God showed him what, it, what I make clean is clean. Pretty much gave him the revelation. Go preach to the Gentiles. Peter never preached to a Gentile, only to Jews. But now God said, I'm switching things up. What I make clean is clean. Go. And Peter goes all the way to Cornelius' house doubtful scared but still listen to god got to the household still doubtful cornelius explained to him how the angel pulled up on him explained to him what was going on cornelius had gathered all his friends and family locally and brought him into his house so you could only imagine cornelius's house was probably a nice one he probably had a big old mansion or something close to it because he had money he was a high-ranking centurion a government a governmental official for the romans so what happens peter starts preaching the gospel the whole house gets baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire before they even go into the water. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The anointing was so strong. The glory and the power and the presence of God was so strong that as Peter started preaching, they all got saved. So what does that mean? That through our giving, aka incense, it's a sweet smelling aroma to, onto God. And our prayers get answered when we give with our prayers and our whole household can be saved. Woo! about Taya. It says it right here. His alms and his prayers. His giving and his prayers. The Bible even says in the book of Timothy that a widow is worth honor, but a teacher is worth double honor. So does that mean, oh, I'm going to go give to the poor, to the widows? Yes, you should, of course. But what you should be giving primarily to is to the ones who cover you, the ones who feed you, the ones who teach you. Even watching this video is mana. It's a revelation for you. Every time I'm in an area where I'm receiving, it could be on YouTube. It could be at a worship center. It could be at a church. It could be a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a man or woman of God who pours into me that's more mature, that has a deeper relationship with Christ than I do. I so and my prayers get answered very quickly. I get asked all the time, how are you fast-tracked, Pastor Rich? How are you moving so speedily? It's not because I'm smarter than you. It's not because I'm better than you. It's not because God favors me more than he favors you. It's because the favor, the speed... The fast tracking, the blessings follow me because I understood this ki these kingdom principles. Give unto God and pray and have intention with your giving. Now, I'm going to explain even deeper. Look at this. Open to the book of Numbers, chapter 15. We're going to get into the Old Testament now. 
I'm going to read a few of the first few verses. I'm going to, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's very, it's very obvious that God is a God of intention, right? Some people think, oh, you don't have to give with, you don't have to give and pray. Just give if you want to give from your heart. And da -da 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 -da. Watch this. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speaking to Moses, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you have come into the land, you are to inhabit that I, which I am giving to you. So Moses, God told Moses to tell the people, when you go to the land that I'm giving to you, that means a blessing, and you make an offering by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering or sacrifice to fulfill a vow, or as a free will offering, uh, or or in, in your appointed feast, to make a sweet aroma to the Lord. I'm gonna say it again, to make a sweet aroma to the Lord, incense. So they had intention behind their giving. It could have been a free will offering, an offering for a vow, a burnt sacrifice, from the herd of your flock. And it's a sweet aroma unto God. Sacrifice. Everyone say sacrifice. God loves sacrifice. The Bible talks about sacrifice all throughout the scriptures. We are to love and sacrifice. We are to give and sacrifice. Pray and sacrifice. My goodness, Jesus Christ was sacrificed on a cross for us. We are sacrificing every day. What are you focused on? Are you sacrificing your pride when you preach the gospel to people in the streets? Are you sacrificing Sacrificing, are you sacrificing your time by focusing on God all day? Are you sacrificing your sleep by getting into the secret place for prayer and worship when you want to sleep? Are you sacrificing your are you sacrificing your slothfulness by making sure you hit the gym? God loves sacrifice. Everyone say sacrifice. Look, I'm gonna continue. Four, then he who presents his offering to the Lord shall bring a grain offering of one tenth of an ephah of fine, fine flour mixed with one fourth of a hint of oil and one fourth of a hint of wine as a drink offering. Look how specific and intentional God is. He gave specific direct directions. The tabernacle and the temple, there were specific directions on how to build it. Our God is a God of intention. If you think that you should not be giving with prayer, you are deceived because the Bible is very clear that the personality of of God is intention. He has an, he's very specific, detailed, and intention. He is not lazy. He is not slothful. He is not disorderly. Our God is a God of order. Everyone say order. Amen. And look at six. All for a ram you shall prepare as a grain offering, two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one third of a hint of oil. And as a drink offering, you shall offer one third of a hint of wine as a sweet aroma to the Lord. So again, as a sweet aroma to the Lord. So this proves, I mean, I could read many scriptures. Second Samuel talks about how David, when he did census, when he would take track of all the Israelites, he had, they had to give an offering even for the attendance of the Israelites. They'd have to give an offering unto God. There was constant offerings all throughout the scripture. All throughout the scripture, there was con constant offerings and God will give specifics. Are we under the law? No. But is the law abolished? No. The law is good. We just couldn't maintain it. So that's why we needed who? Everyone say it. Say Jesus. He came to fulfill the law. Now through Christ, we are made perfect and righteous and holy by our faith in Jesus Christ. Of course. Hallelujah. But we learn kingdom principles, he's the way to live in the kingdom through his word. That's why the Bible says, another revelation, seek his kingdom and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added onto you. Some of you are praying for your business. Some of you are praying for family members to be saved. Some of you are praying for friends to be saved. Some of you are praying for deliverance and healing. Some of you are praying for breakthrough, but you do not understand sacrifice. Some of you have, have understood the sacrifice of prayer. Some of you have understood the sacrifice of praise and worship, the sacrifice of, of repentance, maintaining a holy lifestyle through Christ, right? Him strengthening you. Yes, it is not by our works that we're saved, but faith without works is dead, my God. So if you have faith in giving and you understand the revelation of giving, just like Cornelius did, you will understand that sacrifice is a sweet aroma unto God. And Cornelius understood the sacrifice of his finances. And because he understood that through his giving and through his prayer, what happened? 
everybody got saved in this household. Baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and prophesying, all that power of God coming upon them and in them, all because of his giving and prayers. If God did not care about his giving, if God did not care about his giving, he would have never mentioned it. The angel would have said, oh, God hears your prayers. God hears your prayers and that's it. But there's a reason because when we pray, we need to have a sacrifice we bring before the Lord. Even the Bible says, don't even bring your gifts to the altar until you made it right with your brother and sister. We're supposed to bring to the altar. At our church, we have prophetic declarations and moves where people come and they get up and they bring their gift. They're offering their tithes to the offer with an intention instead of giving in vain. That's why so many people give grudgingly. The Bible says, do not give grudgingly, but joyfully. You give joyfully when you have the revelation of giving. I have seen so many testimonies. There are too many preachers, pastors, leaders that don't want to preach about this because they don't believe it themselves. Or if they do believe it, they don't have enough faith to preach it. And why would you be leading a congregation if you're not teaching your people how to be blessed and prayers to be answered? How dare you? Some of you are preachers and pastors right now that are like, oh my gosh, yes, repent. I had to repent. I learned this in the living room of my household. We didn't get to go out and get a rental of a church anywhere until we caught this. Because you know what? God is a God of intention. So what does that mean? I, at the end of the month, I actually calculate how much we made. I give my 10%. I give an offering. The book of Malachi, chapter 3. We're going to read that too. Everyone pull it out. Malachi 3. Pull it out. You should be reading the scriptures along with me. Don't just believe me because you like my YouTube channel or something. Learn this stuff yourself so that you could catch the revelation, receive the breakthrough, and teach others. Because you know why? There's too much poverty in the body of Christ, and it's because people don't understand giving. There's too many people who think that God wants us to be broke when the Bible says the complete opposite. And you know what? The same people who think God wants us to be broke don't know the scriptures. The apostles and prophets were taken care of. How do we advance the kingdom? How are we added onto if we don't understand it? Like how are we how are we going to receive? How how are we going to win souls and build churches if we don't have the, the finances? God wants to bless us in every avenue. He wants us to prosper in every avenue in our body, soul, and spirit. So that means in the physical realm, we need money to maintain. Oh, he has that car. Oh, he got that jet and yacht. Oh, he got that church. How dare you judge? You have, you have one side that everybody knows about, which is the love of money. So where you love some money so much, you don't maintain your relationship with Jesus and you depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know because you see the person in iniquity. When they're in iniquity and they don't care and they're still preaching for money and they're over there sleeping with the secretary, getting drunk, they're over there not caring about their kids and wife, neglecting them, they're over there just just living and going to do witchcraft or not caring at all. They don't got no relationship. Their character shows. And you know that that person's probably doing it for the money. Only God can judge unless God reveals it. But can you be a pastor on fire for God and God take care of you financially and you have millions? Of course. I was talking to a man about that yesterday. He was like, it was, a, it was I was preaching the gospel to this man. He wasn't saved. And he said, I just can't stand how my uncle, he's a preacher. He got this nice house and other people are struggling. And I said, what? So you want, so you want God's people to be broke? That means that you don't believe God can prosper. God can prosper anybody. But there's a reason why people are dealing with poverty. The Bible says he humbles with poverty and he, he exalts with riches. So what's the other side of mammon being a slave to money? Is you have fear. You don't believe God can prosper you. There's two sides, the love of money and then the fear of money, which means you still love it because you don't trust that God, an all-powerful God can prosper you. So you're greedy. So you don't tithe. You don't give. You're stingy. Those, those same type of people, they don't go to church and they're living in all types of iniquity, alcohol addiction, pornography, adultery. You don't ever see an on fire, Holy Ghost filled, mature Christian who don't go to church and give. You never see that. You'll see a lot of babies in the faith who are in rebellion out of ignorance, like I was at one point, preaching against, oh, I don't got to go to church. I can go to a house church, or I don't got to give. I can give to the poor. I, that used to be me until God broke me and showed me that the man who feeds me mana, the man who covers my soul, is more important than the man who's dealing with a drug addiction that wants to go spend money on drugs. Just like Peter and John when they walked, when they walked by the man who was begging them for money at the gate of beautiful, right in the book of Acts. What happened? I think it was chapter five or six, I believe. They said, money I don't have, gold and silver I don't have. Get up in the name of Jesus Christ. 
and he got healed. So instead of giving him money, he got healed by the blood of Jesus Christ so he can go work and make his own money. I tell you, I tell you. Some of you are dealing with poverty because you're lazy and slothful. The Bible says if you have sloth, you got a spirit of poverty. Body of Christ, we got to wake up. Other continents and countries like Africa, they understood this. They caught this. And they're breaking out of that poverty. America, why are we so lost in this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you Malachi 3. This is the Bible. And this for the for the man or woman who says, oh, but tithing is under the, 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 the Levitical law. Did they tithe under the, under the Mosaic law? Yes, they did. It was more than 10%. If you added it up, it was about 24%. But even before the law was established, catch this, Abraham tithed onto Melchizedek because it's a kingdom principle. Melchizedek was a revelation of Jesus Christ. This is a kingdom principle. This is the personality of God it is to give. If you go look in the, in the book of Leviticus and you go read about the Mosaic law, they gave a lot, a lot more than mo what most Christians do. Sometimes over 50%. I want to read about tithes and offerings. Look at this. Start off in verse eight. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And tithes and offerings. So some of your some of you guys' prayers are not being answered because you're prideful. Because you don't tithe, you don't give offerings, you don't give on to God and his church. Remember, I said the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, when it's in a church, God's there. You're not giving to the pastor, you're not giving to the congregation, you're not giving for their light bill, you're not giving for their rent, you're giving on to God through his ministry, through his church. And the money is handled by the leader. That's their job. That's their responsibility to manage the storehouse. That's on them. If they don't get this right, that's when God chastens them and comes down on them. That's something you don't want to deal with because God will not be mocked. People who go take the church's money and use it on prostitutes, strippers, alcohol, right? Look what happened to Eli and his children. The children were sleeping with the woman at, 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 the, at the tabernacle uh, door. And what happened? His children got struck dead and so did Eli. God told Eli, tell your children to repent. Eli told them once they didn't repent. He didn't come down with the sword, though. He didn't come down with the rod, though. He should have. He should have came down on them and not give them nothing. But he kept giving from the storehouse, from the tithes and offerings to his children. They didn't want to repent. They got, they got, they, they, God let them die. God let Eli die. And Samuel got risen up. So what does that go to show you? God will not be mocked. All these false preachers who are out there preaching for money, but you know their cap, right? Which means lies. If they're out there and you don't you see half the time you guys think they're false, but you don't know. You don't know who they are behind closed doors, bro. Just because they got an outfit on, they got a gold chain or some jewelry, you start thinking they're a false prophet. How dare you? But then you'll go so on the Starbucks ran by Freemasons and witchcraft. But then you'll go so into the club and bars onto the temple of Baal. People out there throwing money to strippers onto the temple of, of Moloch, where they, where, they, where, they, where they got strippers and prostitutes. Oh, you need to repent. Now look at this. Nine, you are cursed with a curse when you don't give unto God. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. You go to the church and you receive a word, but you don't tithe and give an offering unto God after you receive, received spiritual food. But you'll go to the grocery store, get some chicken and pay for it because you don't want to get caught stealing. But you come to God's house and you steal. How dare you? And then God says, if you give unto me, this is what will happen. Look at this. Bring all the tithes. Look at this. Into the storehouse. The storehouse was where? In the church, ran by the pastor, ran by the Levites, ran by the leaders. That there may be food in my house and try me now in this. He says, test me, try me. The father says, try me. Bring your tithes and offerings into a church or in, onto a man or woman of God where you know the Holy Ghost is moving. Try me. Bring your tithes, your 10% and anything on top of that. And this is what he says. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there will not be enough room to even receive it. Your prayers will get answered. Everything that you've been asking for will start getting answered very quickly because you're sacrificing and it's a sweet smelling aroma unto God. Look what else he'll do. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So the devourer, I want you guys to catch a revelation too. This is some, this is some gems added onto it. 
Job chapter 41 speaks about Leviathan. Leviathan was created for the children of pride. Leviathan cannot be beaten by any man or angel. Only God himself can beat Leviathan. God created Leviathan for the children of pride, and only God can beat Leviathan. Malachi 3 says he'll rebuke the devourer. Catch this. Leviathan, Levi, right? What were the Levites supposed to do? Give sacrifices unto God. So what does Leviathan do? Stop you from receiving your blessing by not allowing you to sacrifice unto God. Steals the fruit, the vine, the crops, which is all the laboring and prayer and worship. Some of you have been praying for 10, 15, 20 years and are going to catch crazy breakthrough right now. Some of you right now. Wondering why your prayers aren't answered. Wondering why things are happening. You know why? Because you don't give. You're greedy and you need to repent. Tonight, today, tonight, whatever time it is where you at, wherever city or country, continent you at in the world, I'm the guy. The guy with the tattoos and the G-Star Raw shirt. The young pastor with tattoos, right? That know that people think look crazy. Oh, he has the boldness to go into a psychic shop. He has the boldness to go tell witches to repent and Muslims. I love it. I want to get there too. What if your boldness comes from your giving? I've been giving. My wife and I, we give exceedingly more than 10%. We give 20 to 30, sometimes 50, 60. We give, we give more onto God. We find ministries where God is moving powerfully and we sow with joy because we know he's going to bring it back the way we need and we give with intention. We put it on our prayer list and we pray throughout the entire month on our offering and tithe for what we need. And we've seen breakthrough after breakthrough, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you are breaking out of religion, breaking out of poverty, breaking out of Leviathan. If that's you, I want you to give today or tonight. I want you to give onto the rock. Yes, onto the Remnant Revival Outreach Center where this YouTube channel is, is focused around my, the ministry that I'm in, right, that I'm serving as a pastor. I want you to give onto the rock. You, got, you know the Holy Ghost movement. And I want you to have an intention with your giving. The Bible says to pray in private and give in private, right? So I don't want you to comment how much you're giving. And I don't want you to comment what you're praying for. I want you to sow. Through the church center app, cash app, PayPal, Venmo, whatever it is. And I want you to test God. Okay? Some of you might say, I give $10 and $20. Have you actually calculated your tithes and offerings? Have you calculated 10% of your income and not just gave 10, but gave maybe 15 or 20? You want to invest into cryptocurrency. I want to invest into a business. I want to invest into a savings account, a Roth IRA. But you don't invest into the kingdom of God. You invest into the kingdom and God will give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelation, the divine encounters, everything you need so you don't even need no Roth IRA. He'll give you a business that will bring you to retirement if you trust in God. So I want you guys today to give to, for what you've been asking for. And I want you guys to thank God after you give and after you pray. And every day that you pray for that specific thing, instead of saying, God, I pray for the salvation of my mother, I want you to do something different. For example, if you're praying for the salvation of your mother, I want you to do this. I want you to give. If you usually give 10, give 100, give 1,000, give more than what you usually give and say, God, I'm giving on to you for, the, for my mother. And then I want you to say, God, thank you because it's done. The Bible says, if you ask, you shall receive. Our Heavenly Father, we ask and we know it's done. So I want you to give, pray, Ask and thank him. And every single day that you go on your prayer list, I want you to write down what you gave for. I want you to read it and say, God, thank you that my sister saved. Thank you that my mother saved. And I want you to praise him. God loves people who praise him and thank him because it shows what? Faith. It's a sweet smelling aroma onto God. Your sacrifice of praise, your sacrifice of money, because that's the one thing that nobody wants to do, man. Some of you are wondering why, why, why. It's because you haven't caught this revelation. It's all throughout the scriptures, man. Cornelius, literally his whole household got saved because he gave and he prayed. So what, you think he's different than you? The Bible says, I'm so serious, that if you give on to a teacher, he's worth double honor than a widow. Go look it up. 
Go look it up. It's in the book of Timothy. We're supposed to honor a widow with our giving and take care of them. A widow is what? A widow is a woman who lost her husband that can't work to provide for her and her children. So a woman's in the, in, in the house of God is worth double honor. We take care. I mean, it's worth honor. We take care of her. We financially bless her. We give on to her, make sure she's okay because her husband's not, her husband can't work. I mean, she can't work because her husband's dead. That's how it was back then. Now it's a little different, but still I've been in situations where a widow will come to our church. Her husband died and her kids need, and they, they need, they need help. And we give the whole church, gave a whole offering onto her. We would give a whole offering onto a widow Amen. The whole offering will go to her. But the Bible says in that same chapter that a teacher who feeds you is worth double honor. Double. Why? Because they're not just feeding one person. They're feeding a whole congregation. They're feeding on social media. Thousands upon thousands, millions of souls are being fed through the ministry. Souls are being saved. People are being delivered and healed. When you know that, you don't know the type of spiritual warfare, for example, that my wife and I go through. We go through warfare for what we're doing on the internet because it's reaching the masses. It's going viral for the glory of God and we go through warfare But because he's anointed us to be able to handle it to where we do have peace, to where we do have grace, to where we are in the spirit, to where we are praying. We have to maintain a lifestyle of holiness. We have to maintain a lifestyle of obedience, of sacrifice. That's why you guys see my wife at the altar, pregnant, casting devils out. Yes, my wife has been casting devils out, pregnant with all our children. Mighty woman of God. So yes, give on to the rock with you, what the Lord puts in your heart. If you've never even seen what we do at the rock, go watch the old videos. Go test the spirit yourself. Go watch the lives. Go watch all the videos. The Holy Ghost will confirm to you. And by your giving, I promise you, there will be testimonies. The last thing I want you guys to do is if you prayed and you gave, I want you to comment down below and say, I prayed and I gave. Comment. And then when you get the testimony, ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> I've seen so many testimonies. I can sit here and just start naming them. But I'm not going to do that. I want you to move in faith. Okay, we don't have the time to do that. It's too many. I, after you comment, I prayed and I gave, I want you to come back later when the prayer gets answered very quickly, speedily. And I want you to say, I have a testimony and give your full testimony of what happened. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear the testimonies. God bless you guys. I love you guys, and I'm going to pray over this. I'm going to come in agreement with you guys in your prayers. Because we're to agree. It's established in heaven. I'm going to come in agreement with you by the Spirit of God. And this video is going to be up here probably for years upon years, and you can still receive a blessing every time you watch this video and give on to God and what He's doing at The Rock. So I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every brother and sister that gives and that prays. And first, I want to say thank you for the deliverance, the breakthrough, the revelation, the conviction, the transformation by this teaching, by your word, by your spirit. I pray, Lord, for every brother and sister who gives and prays with an intention, a specific intention, Father, that it be a sweet-smelling aroma to you of sacrifice and that the prayer of faith and sacrifice of incense together will be right before your throne father and be sweet smelling onto you and be answered speedily thank you lord that you're in this ministry that the holy spirit is moving mightily that they see it the people see it lord bless them lord bless everybody who comments down below everyone who blesses the ministry and even the people who don't comment or don't bless or don't sow into the ministry lord i pray that you plant a seed right now and that they'll receive breakthrough in their lives and even give on to their ministries, give on to their local churches or the men of God who are feeding them or the women of God who are feeding them. Lord, move mightily. I come in agreement with all the prayers of the saints, Lord. I come in agreement by the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you guys to praise God. Woo! Praise Him. You need to learn how to praise. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise Him. God bless you guys again. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. I love you guys. Go binge watch all the videos. We got Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and obviously YouTube. And go check out the videos. God bless you guys in Jesus' name.